Welcome back to the Youth of Bible in One Year, day 284. Today we're talking about more. We want more wisdom from God. We want to be more pleasing to God. And also we want to do more listening to God. So how do we do all of these things? How do we get more? More, please, is the title of the autobiography of comedian and actor Barry Humphreys, best known for playing his alter ego, Dame Edna Everidge. He writes that these two words, more, please, were his first coherent utterance. He went on to say, I've always wanted more. I've never had enough milk or money or socks or sex or holidays or first editions or solitude or gramophone records or free meals or real friends or guiltless pleasure or neckties or applause or unquestioning love or persimmons. Of course, I've always had more than my share of most of these commodities, but it's always left me with a vague feeling of unfulfillment. Where was the rest? Seeking pleasure for ourselves will always leave us with a vague feeling of unfulfillment. In the passages for today, we see what really will satisfy your spiritual hunger and thirst and the things that you should seek more and more. Paul highlights two things in particular, living to please God more and more, and loving each other more and more. From Proverbs 24 I applied my heart to what I observed and learned a lesson from what I saw. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. More wisdom from God. Wisdom comes from God and is very practical. The sayings of the wise cover many different aspects of our lives. Here we see some examples. First, judge impartially. To show partiality in judging is not good. For those who judge justly, rich blessings will come upon them. Second, speak honestly. An honest answer is like a kiss on the lips. Sometimes it's hard to speak the truth in love, but we need to be honest with one another. The best answer you can give to any question asked, for example, by a guest on Alpha, is an honest one. Third, stay loyal. Don't talk about your neighbours behind their backs. No slander or gossip, please. Anyone can stay true to your face, but it's the people who stay true behind your back that really count. Fourth, show restraint. The temptation to pay back those who've done us harm is very great. However, the writer of Proverbs warns against taking revenge. Do not say, I'll do to them as they have done to me. I'll pay them back for what they did. Fifth, work hard. The book of Proverbs often warns against laziness. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come on you like a bandit, and scarcity like an armed man. Lord, help me to grow in wisdom, in impartiality, honesty, faithfulness, restraint, and industry, so that more and more I may live a life that pleases you. New Testament from 1 Thessalonians 4 We instructed you how to live in order to please God, as in fact you are living. Now we ask you and urge you in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honourable, and that in this matter no one should wrong or take advantage of a brother or sister. For God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, anyone who rejects this instruction does not reject a human being, but God, the very God who gives you his Holy Spirit. Now about your love for one another. We do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. Yet we urge you, brothers and sisters, to do so 
more and more, and to make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. More pleasing to God. Instead of just looking out for number one, we're called to live lives that please God more and more. Rather than more please, we should live lives that are more pleasing to God. You're called to love God more and more and to love others more and more. How do you do this? First, give dignity to your body. God is concerned about your body as well as your soul. Learn to appreciate and give dignity to your body. Paul writes, You should avoid sexual immorality. Each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honourable, not in passionate lust like the heathen who do not know God. Second, live a beautiful life. God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life, holy and beautiful, as beautiful on the inside as the outside. True beauty has nothing to do with looks. It's about how you look on the inside. The process of being made holy takes place through the work of the Holy Spirit. God gives you his Holy Spirit for this purpose. Third, love each other. Paul writes, about your mutual love, we do not need to write to you, for you yourselves have been taught by God to love each other. Get better and better at it. Fourth, mind your own business. Paul writes that we're not just to be ambitious, but we're to be ambitious to live a quiet life and to be industrious. This is surprising to read, particularly given the great things Paul did for God, but it seems there is a deep significance in the apparently small things of life. Paul specifically writes, mind your own business. Gossip is when you're sharing information and you are neither part of the problem nor part of the solution. Of course, there is a time when we need to get involved and to help other people, but we are not to go around interfering in other people's business. Fifth, get a job if you can. Paul writes, work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. For some, such as stay-at-home parents, their work is in the home. Others work outside the home, earning money to support their family. The general rule is that we should try to get a job if we can and not be dependent on others for our support. Some may be dependent on the body of Christ for support, such as those in certain types of unpaid full-time ministry, but this is the exception rather than the rule. Sixth, enjoy an endless hope. No one can live well until they can die well. Death is another subject on which you are called to have a different attitude. Of course we grieve when someone dies. But Paul says we should not grieve like the rest who have no hope. Because since Jesus died and broke loose from the grave, God will most certainly bring back to life those who have died in Jesus. Death is not the end. Paul is saying that just as Jesus died and rose again, in the same way we believe that in the resurrection, God will bring with him all those who have fallen asleep. Paul uses a different word here. Whereas Jesus died for you, you will never die. You only fall asleep. You will be reunited with Jesus to meet the Lord. And we will be reunited with each other, caught up together with them. One huge family reunion. Not only will you be with the Lord forever, but you will also be with all those who have fallen asleep in him. Many people see only a hopeless end, but you have an endless hope. Remind 
and encourage each other with these words. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit who is at work within me and who helps me to live a life that pleases you more and more. Help me in my weakness to live a holy life of love, sexual purity, right ambition, hope and encouragement. Old Testament from Jeremiah 23-25 to But which of them has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or to hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? For twenty-three years the word of the Lord has come to me, and I have spoken to you again and again, but you have not listened. And though the Lord sent all his servants, the prophets, to you again and again, you have not listened or paid any attention. More listening to God. God speaks. You and I can listen to the words of God. This is what makes the Bible so powerful. Is not my word like fire, declares the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? Jeremiah spoke holy words to the people of God and rebuked their leaders for a failure to lead holy lives. The land is full of adulterers and leaders who use their power unjustly. He accuses them of being sex-driven, living a lie. He calls them to repentance. At the root of their problem is the failure to listen to God. You refuse to listen. The Lord asked through Jeremiah, But which of the prophets has stood in the counsel of the Lord to see or hear his word? Who has listened and heard his word? I never sent these prophets, but they ran away. I never spoke to them, but they preached anyway. If they have bothered to sit down and meet with me, They'd have preached my message to my people. If you hear the words of God and speak them out, you will have a very powerful impact. But you prophets who have a message from me, tell it truly and faithfully. Isn't my message like fire? Isn't it like a sledgehammer busting a rock? The words of the Bible are so powerful, like fire and like a hammer that breaks a rock to pieces. The more I study it, the more it breaks the rock of my heart and the Holy Spirit works a process of transformation and sanctification. Lord, help me to spend more and more time listening to and hearing your words and to live a life more and more loving, holy and pleasing to you. Pepper adds, In 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 11 it says, Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your hands. It is rather a busy day for a quiet life, but I'll do my best. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you give me wisdom. Thank you that you give me the knowledge to be pleasing to you. But Lord, Sometimes I struggle to listen to your words. Sometimes they're hard to hear, and sometimes I can't hear them at all. Help me to listen to you more. Help me to listen now. Would you speak to me now? Come, Holy Spirit.